All right, hello everybody. This is going to be a tutorial on to how to set up a Minecraft surfer. So during this time of quarantine, you can play with your friends. So this tutorial is gonna be split up into two different parts. The first part is going to be setting up an Ubuntu virtual machine. If you've already got a machine running Ubuntu, you can skip to this part of the video in which we're going to be configuring a Minecraft server on Ubuntu server mode. All right, so for those of you setting up a Synology NAS, we're first going to be installing Ubuntu server on a virtual machine. So I've already made a video showing you how to set up a Ubuntu virtual machine. So I'm not gonna be going in depth here, but I'm still gonna be going over the main parts and doing it myself. If you get stuck in this part at all, feel free to reference this other video here. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into Virtual Machine Manager. And here, if you look at my images, I've got already got this Ubuntu live server right here. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new one. It's going to be a Linux install. I'm going to be hosting on my tank. And we're going to be naming it Minecraft because it's only going to be running the Minecraft server. So Minecraft is not too RAM intensive, but we don't want to be running out. So let's do five. So Minecraft in and of itself is a single threaded application. So that means we only need to allocate it one core for performance. However, if we're going to be giving it two here, that way it will still run the operating system on a separate core and we're not lagging anytime we're operating the Ubuntu server. All right, so as you know, Minecraft takes up very little space. We'll give it 100 gigs just to be safe. I don't expect we'll use this. However, it's always nice to have more, and that way we won't run into any issues. Default VM network. And for the ISO file, we're going to just use this Ubuntu live server. We'll have it auto start. And the rest of this, we don't need. So this is who's gonna have permission to configure your Minecraft server. If you have other people on here who you would like to be able to mess with the Minecraft server, you can add them on here. However, I'm just gonna be adding myself. And let's go. All right, so now we just have our Ubuntu virtual machine created. We're gonna go ahead and connect to it to configure it. All right, and so now it's got a pretty straightforward setup guide. And here we can even choose to set up a static IP address, which I would highly recommend doing. All right, so for here, basically what I did, you give it the subnet and a static IP address. This way, anybody who's VPNed into your network knows the exact address of the Minecraft server so they don't have to figure it out every single time they want to connect. All right, so these setups are pretty straightforward. If you're having trouble, go ahead and reference that previous video. We'll call it Minecraft. All right, so this is really important. We want to make sure to install OpenSSH. We'll deal with SSH keys later on. All right, so we actually do not need any of these. So we're just gonna hit done. And at the end of the day, we can install them later if we really need them. All right, so now it's gonna take a little while to install, and so I'll get back to you once it's done installing. All right, so that took forever, but we are finally back, and it's finally installed everything and rebooted, and now we're getting this error right here that says, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. This is because to create the virtual machine, it mounts a virtual disk with the installer on there, and our Synology doesn't know when to pull that out. So the solution to this is really easy. Just go back into our server and go in and hit edit. 
and on under others we've got this ISO file for boot up. We're just going to hit unmount. That way there's nothing in there. It's like pulling out a disk but virtually. So now when we go back into our server we just hit enter and it's going to work. Another thing I would highly recommend setting up here is a SSD cache. Having an SSD cache will allow your virtual machines to run a lot faster because the operating system will be running directly off of an SSD, which has incredibly fast random read and writes, which is what an operating system really needs. So I really prefer SSHing rather than the command line interface that's hosted via Synology for a virtual machine. So we're going to start up terminal for Mac. If you are doing this on PC, don't worry, you can install PuTTY, which is an SSH client. So if you're on a Mac, open up terminal. And if you're on a PC, open up PuTTY and SSH into our newly created Ubuntu server. All right, so if you're just joining us from the Ubuntu side of this tutorial, the only thing that's different is we need to have SSH configured and a static IP address configured. You don't actually have to have a static IP address configured. It's just going to be very annoying if you don't. So we're going to type SSH username at the IP address we just set up. So it's going to give us this first time connecting error. And so we're just going to say yes and type in our password. So as we can see here, we've successfully logged in using our static IP address. So now we're going to run some setup things to make sure we've got everything up to date. So we're going to do sudo app get update. This updates the list of apps within our Ubuntu server. So that way it knows what apps are there. And since we did sudo, it runs as an administrator and it's going to download all of the different links to the servers, which house apps. All right. So now it knows what packages we are. And so now we're going to install Java because Minecraft server runs on Java. So first I'm going to go ahead and just give us some space here by hitting clear, bring us back up to the top. We're going to do sudo app get again, but this time we're going to do default dash JDK. Oh, got to install it. So the great thing about app get is it pulls everything you need from the top. So this app needs a bunch of other apps, which might need a bunch of other apps. App get is smart and it just goes down that tree and installs everything you don't currently have. I really like the way this works as opposed to the way windows does it, where you have to install everything and there's not really good folder structure and it just gets confusing using app get. You can install just about anything and its dependencies. All right, so now that that's finished installing, the next piece of software we're going to be installing is Screen. Screen allows you to have two different desktops while SSHing and even leave one of them behind. That means you'll be able to start up the Minecraft server over SSH, have it run its entirely own window, and when we're done and we log off of the SSH, it'll continue to run. So do the same thing except install Screen. And the nice thing is about this installation of Ubuntu, it was already there. And the final thing we got to get is wget. This allows us to download things easily. And once again, this was pre-installed in this distribution of Linux. So that meant we did not have to download it. All right. So now we've got everything installed that we need. So let's figure out where we would like to put the Minecraft directory. So I'm just going to put it in my users folder. That way I know exactly where it is. So I'm going to give us some room here and I'm just going to do MK deer for make directory and call it server one. And so now if we LS, we can see here that it's created this directory server one. So let's CD into it. All right. So now we're going to use wget to download all of the Minecraft server files from the most recent page. I've attached a link in the description right here that shows you where to find this. So if you go ahead and open up the link in the description, you'll get brought to this page. We're going to go ahead and right click on the link and copy it. Then we're going to go back into our SSH and do wget 
paste it in there, dash capital O to open it, and then name it whatever this is right here. Minecraft underscore server 1152.jar. All right, and let's run it. And so now that has gone through and downloaded that link that we set up and created this folder. So you can name this whatever you wanted to, but the easiest thing to do is name it the version. That way you never confuse which version you're running. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start up the Minecraft server by running java.xms. This tells how much RAM to start with. We'll start with one gigabyte then x max, which is the maximum amount of RAM we're allowed to use. Since we set this up with five gigabytes of total RAM, we're going to give it four, that way the operating system has one gigabyte of RAM to work with, dash jar, because it's a jar file, and then type in Minecraft. All right, so let's hit run. We should get an error right here after it figures out what it's doing. Because we have not, accepted the end user license agreement. I actually really like the way that they've set this up. So instead of having you say yes on the command line, they actually make you go through this file and edit it. So now if we ls, we'll see we've got right here the end user license agreement txt. So we'll just edit that with nano. And so currently it says we do not agree. So we'll just change this false to a true. All right, and so finally to save it, we're gonna do control O to write it, enter to save it, control X to exit. So now let's go ahead and rerun that command we just ran. All right, and as you can see here, it is loading up the world. That means we have successfully started it. One thing to note important here before we leave, you'll see the starting Minecraft server on this port right here, 25565. That is the default server port. So different tutorials will tell you different things to do about this. If you open up that port on your router, then any of your friends can go ahead and just type in the IP address of your house and it will automatically connect them into here. This does have a slight security hole if you don't know what you're doing. You should never be opening up ports on your router that you don't know about. What I would highly recommend doing is setting up a VPN. If you've got a Synology, it's incredibly easy and I've already got a tutorial on how to do this. However, if you are comfortable opening up that port, it is really easy for your friends to connect, especially if you have a Synology NAS. In another tutorial right here, I actually showed how to use the DDNS capabilities of a Synology NAS. Synology will give you a website called whateveryoulike.synology.me. Then when anybody types that into something like a Minecraft server, it will automatically redirect them to the IP address of your home network. This means that if you don't have a static IP address through your ISP and they change the IP address to your house, this will automatically update meaning people will still be able to connect to it. However, do realize that there is a risk associated with this. All right, so now let's go ahead and just load up Minecraft and see what happens. Good old Java edition. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and load up Minecraft. Note, this only works with Minecraft Java edition. All right, here's the loading screen for Minecraft Java Edition. So we're going to select multiplayer, proceed, and it's automatically gonna look for games on our local network. This will work for anybody who's connected to your Synology NAS via VPN because it will act as if they're on a VPN. The easiest thing to do is just hit add server and enter the IP address. So this is why we set up that static IP address earlier. All right, and let's just join it.
as we can see right here, I'm on, I'm playing on my Synology NAS. This means I can host a bunch of different people. All right, so now that we know that the Minecraft server works, let's go ahead and set up some properties. We'll SSH back into it. All right. So let's go back in that server one folder. All right, so now we've got a bunch of different options to choose from. And we can edit them using Nano, the text editor. So let's choose the server property. Here we've got the different things that can be used to gain performance right here. You can change the maximum build height, the view distance, and things like that. And overall, configure a bunch of different options for the server. So, so right here, right here if, you'd like if you'd like to use a whitelist instead of a blacklist, you can do that here. This means only people who you say can join your game will be able to join your game. If you choose this to true, you'll have to go in the whitelist.json file and give each of their names. You can choose every single one of the options you'd like to do here. So that you can configure to your heart's desire. I would also recommend making a copy of it by doing copy server properties and calling it server properties dot back. This way, as you can see here, we've got this server properties dot back file. If you have something that breaks the server, you can just replace it with this backed up file that you know works, which is helpful to have. All right, so now we know that everything works. So now let's set it up so it will work long term. So the first thing we're going to want to do is use the screen that we installed earlier. As I said earlier, it allows you to kind of have virtual desktops stored on the server. That way you can pull them down whenever you need to. We're going to do this by typing screen s to start and then name it something. And we'll, we'll just name it server one. All right, so now we've just joined this virtual screen. So now we can run the command in the background to start it. So we're going to do the same thing we did earlier, but this time add in this no GUI part. This means it won't create a GUI, which we don't need because we're running it via SSH and we can get increased performance. Ah, we have to be in the right folder. And now it should work. All right, so it's gonna take a minute to start up. All right, so now the server has started up. So let's go ahead and connect to it. And voila, we've started. So we can also make commands within the server by going into this window right here. <laughs> it's time set day. And so as we can see here, we've changed the time to day. There's a whole list of commands on the wiki page. We also probably want to make ourselves an OP. So just type backslash OP and your username. And so now I've become a server operator. So I can do things like game mode and become whatever I want to. All right, so the final thing to do is to close the screen that we've been running. That means that the screen will be pushed to the server and no longer be just held on our local machine. That means that when we sign off of this, it will not kill the server for everyone else. So to do this, it's really easy to do control A, D. And now we're running in a detached mode. To see what's being run, you do screen dash LS. And as you can see here, there is a screen server one that is still running. If we'd like to get back to it to do additional commands, do just screen R eight, two, six, six, which is this number right here. And we're back in the Minecraft server. Same thing as before, control A, D. All right, and so now we can hit exit to exit out of the SSH shell, and we still have our Minecraft server running. Voila. All right, so we'll go ahead and disconnect from that. 
And now the final thing is to give access to your friends. So this would not be a problem if you've got everybody at your house right now. However, if you have people on different networks, you've got two choices to go choose from. The first is to open up the 255-65 port on your router. This allows network traffic on that port to come into your network. However, it does come with a degree of worry. So if you're only using blacklisting and you do this, anybody will be able to join your Minecraft world just based off your IP address and do whatever. So right off the bat, I would recommend only whitelisting your friends and choosing whitelist. The other option, which I believe is the better one is to use a VPN connection basically connects your friends computers to your home network that way everything stays very secure I've got a video on that here that you can watch and I would recommend using that other than that I hope you found this tutorial interesting and fun and have fun playing Minecraft with your friends have a good one bye